Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to 31 Days of Pompoween. If you're new here and you don't know what Pompoween is or 31 Days of Halloween, it's where I will be posting one video a day during the month of October. Yes, 31 videos this month. It's a lot. It's a lot. I know. I did it last year too. So if you haven't watched that, there's a playlist. You can, you can click right here to watch it. Those videos were awesome. But anyway, Today I'm going to be doing The Countess from American Horror Story, played by Lady Gaga. I have a blonde wig that every time I wear it, everyone tells me I look like her and everyone asks me to do her makeup, so it's happening. It's finally happening. I hope you guys like it. Before I begin, please don't forget to like and subscribe. I really, really appreciate your support, especially during this month, because... Pompoween is awesome. So as you can tell, I've already done foundation, concealer, powder, all that. I've done my base. Nothing too complicated. I use the Smashbox Studio Skin Foundation because it has a pretty matte but still natural finish. And then I really mattified the center of my face using the Makeup Forever Matte Velvet Skin, which is a powder foundation that is very, very mattifying. Also, since I'm going to be using powder contour today, I set the sides of my face with the Milk Makeup Translucent Powder in the color Light. And that's super important when working with powder products like contour. You want to make sure that your foundation is set in the areas where you're going to use a powder product because if your foundation is still sticky and tacky then the product can stick to a certain area and then it won't blend out as easy and it'll become patchy so no bueno that's why we do a little light layer of powder you don't have to go crazy as you might notice my brows are actually bleached I just did that today so they are freshly bleached I believe hers were bleached for the series if you don't want to bleach yours you can run some concealer through your brow using a spoolie like something like this you can put some really heavy coverage concealer and I would recommend going against the hairs first to get to the root of the hairs and then comb it through and you should get a pretty nice coverage of your brows. That all being said, I'm just gonna jump right into the contour. Oh wait, I forgot. I'm not going straight in with contour because we're gonna be doing something fun today. Lady Gaga is notorious for wearing face tape, like those facelift tapes. So we're gonna be doing that right now. And I'm pretty sure that she wore them for this role because she looks snatched. I actually forgot about this. Otherwise, I would have gone out and purchased actual like professional quality face tapes but because I forgot and because I also want to show you guys like a little quick solution that you can do at home I picked up this trick from a drag queen that goes by sugar love here on YouTube and it's to use micropore tape now this is tape you use for like first aid like for creating your own bandages so I'm gonna be gluing this to my face to right here and I'm not going to glue right here because I don't have any hair that's gonna cover this area but I think she might have lifted this area as well. I mean, I guess I could right here. Yeah, I might. I'll do here and here. Sure, why not? So for that, I'm going to use spirit gum and this one is from PPI. And before you put the glue on your skin, you're gonna wanna clean it off with some alcohol. Now, I don't recommend this for people with sensitive skin. I mean, I don't recommend this in general, but you need to clean off the skin if you're going to apply any sort of adhesive. So I'm just kind of taking the foundation off of where I'm gonna be gluing the tape, which is right kind of here. And then I think I'll do it right here. So it's basically beside the hollow of your cheek and the hollow of your temple. Then, ooh, I can't open it. Ah! Oh okay. There we go. Then I'm gonna take my spirit gum and just brush it on to that clean little area here as well. You can do it over your hair, it's totally fine. You do need to have remover for it though. So with any type of adhesive that you're using, be it Prosade, be it spirit gum, you will need a special remover to take it off. Spirit gum is a very unique type of glue where it needs to be touched for it to get tacky. So you need to tap on it and then see how it starts getting sticky. That's when you know it's done, but you need to do that to activate it. So I'm gonna do that on this side and then I'm going to rip like, I don't know, like this size tape. I'm going to stick that down. You can see that it's gonna do something when I tug. So I just wanna make sure that's really stuck down. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna let it sit for a bit. I'm gonna let it Think about what it's done. And then same thing. Oh no, should have done the bottom one first. Then here. 
This is gonna look super silly. I know some people who do this step last in their makeup look, some people who do it first. I decided to do it first because if it goes wrong, I am not that far into the look that I can clean things up and do it again because I've never taped my face before. So I'm hoping, oh no, that went too far. Ah, that went too far. See, like shit like this. And there we go. Always make sure to close your bottle. You don't want your glue to dry out. Also clean your finger off that you used to make the glue tacky. I'm just using alcohol to remove it. Alcohol does work, but I do not recommend using alcohol to remove this afterwards. Not that that's on. Can we do this? Is it gonna work? And then you just stick it to your wig cap. I feel like this one's coming off. Oh wow. Yeah, I don't know if this glued it down well enough. Let's try this one. I know some queens use like duct tape to help secure these. Some crazy shit. She is snatched. So I'm just going to press down on these just to make sure that they are quite secure. They do make proper ones for this with an elastic in the back. It's like really, really tight and it really pulls your face. But I don't have that. So this is like the, the homemade version. I wonder if I can put another one on top of this one. I'm gonna try that, you know what? Fuck it. I wanna really make sure this is pulled taut. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna double tape it. I don't know if that's a thing. I don't know if I should be doing that or if I'm just gonna mess everything up. But I'm gonna put some glue right on top of this one and a little bit on my skin. I'm gonna cut this tape a little longer. Some of you at home who have experience with face tapes are probably screaming at your screen right now. I don't know what I'm doing, but hey, that's what's fun about makeup, right? It's experimenting and trying things out. So, oh, see, I'm getting more pull from this one. I'm just gonna secure that to the back of my head. See, now I'm getting more lift. I think it might be the angle as well. I think the angle on the second one is better than the first one. So probably depends on the angle as well. Oh, look at that. Now she's snatched. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a little bit of foundation and I'm just going to try and cover that up. I don't know if it'll do anything. I don't know if it'll help, but what will probably help because I'm putting foundation on a white base, the foundation looks much lighter than it actually is. So I think what I'm gonna do, I'm going to take a darker concealer, apply that on the tape kind of match my skin tone a little bit better. See, that's better. Okay, I may not know what I'm doing, but figure it out. Now I'm gonna go into contour. For my contour, I'm gonna go in with the Lunatic Cosmetics Labs Contour Palette Volume 1. A lot of people ask me the best contour color for really pale people, and it's this guy right here. Both of these, but mostly this one. If you don't wanna buy the full palette, they sell single pans as well. That is the color Dark Cool, I believe. And then this one's medium cool. I'm gonna go in with this color and she is very heavily contoured around the forehead. So I'm gonna start there. Her makeup is very minimal. It's very well strategically placed colors. But the one thing I noticed is that she is heavily contoured around the forehead. It's all using very cool tones. So if you try to do this with a bronzer, it won't look right. It's gonna give too much warmth to the face and we definitely don't want that with this look. The only kind of warmth is on her eyelids, but even then the contour around her eyes are cool toned. I'm gonna keep building that up very slowly. You want this to be as smooth and seamless as possible. Now that I think of it, I think her hair probably came all the way here to hide the face tapes that she was wearing. I'm basically contouring all around the forehead. I'm just leaving like a blank little area in the middle of my forehead, but I'm bringing it up to like the arch of my eyebrow and making it darkest close to the hairline. I think she's got a little bit of warmth on her temples, so I'm gonna take this guy, which is still pretty cool toned, but just on the sides of my forehead. It's just slightly warmer than the one I was using. Yeah, that seems about right. Got some heavy ass contouring, girl. And then on the cheeks, I'm gonna be using the same color. I might mix in the other one as well. And it's a very, very high cheekbone situation because of the face tapes. And I'm gonna concentrate it back here. It barely reaches the center of the face, but I really want to give the illusion of super high cheekbones. So I am contouring slightly onto my cheekbone, slightly above where I would normally contour. And you can see that 
really gives us nice high cheekbones. I'm gonna grab a touch of this one to soften that up a little bit. And that's pretty much it. It's not super dark on the cheekbones. It's just slightly there. Her contour on the cheekbone actually seems really, really concentrated. So I'm gonna go in with a smaller brush than this. And now I'm gonna actually mix these two just so I can really kind of concentrate that. Now that I've blended it out, I'm going to concentrate it in the center of where I blend it out. It seems like they used a very small brush to do this so they could be very precise with their application. Just be careful not to draw a stripe on your face. You always wanna be blending out small circular motions and there's no such thing as too much blending, so just blend away. And if you need to, go back in with the bigger brush just to help blend that out a little bit more. Once that's done, I'm also gonna contour my nose real quick, and I'm going to use a tiny bit of this color, and I'm gonna start at the very top of the bridge of the nose. I'm actually gonna go in with a smaller brush for this. Her nose is a lot wider than mine, so I'm gonna bring my contour further down than I normally would. I would do my contour right here. I'm gonna bring it down so that it widens my nose a little bit. I'm going to make my features look like hers as much as possible. Now, this is not celebrity transformation type thing. The only time I ever did that was for Daenerys, which if you haven't watched it, click right here. I had fun with that one actually. And then really defining this arch at the start of the nose. Pretty much where the eyebrows and the nose meet. You can see that helps to elongate the nose as well. Now, because I wanna widen my nose, I'm gonna highlight the bridge. I'm gonna use this pale yellow color and I'm just going to go on the sides where I would typically start my nose contour, but I want to widen. So I'm gonna highlight. This powder is a little too light for me, but bear with me. I'm gonna blend it out. I'm just gonna take a fluffy brush and just dust that along the middle of my nose and blend out those harsh lines. And then I'm also gonna bring that highlight in the middle of my forehead just to blend it in with the nose. And I'm blending it and kind of filling up that space that I didn't contour. I'm also gonna do my nostrils. And then I'm going to do my cheekbones very oh so slightly because I do want to give the impression of super high cheekbones. So I'm doing it like very, very close to my eye. But this powder is very pigmented and it is much lighter than my natural skin color. So I'm being careful with how much I apply. But you can tell what a difference that makes. So the eye is going to be winged out and this is kind of the general area where it's going to wing. So I'm bringing it to right under that wing and you can see that really helps with the lift because the nose highlight is a little bit jarring I'm gonna take a powder that is close to my skin tone and just tone that down a little bit or try to anyway and then I'm also gonna highlight my chin a little bit just the very top of the chin but again all using matte powders. There's absolutely no shimmer in this look. The only different texture is the gloss on the eyes, which I'm actually super excited about. I'm also going to run that just on my brow bone because when you've got bleached brows, you need every sort of definition you can get to show where the brows are, like this contour, this highlight. It'll help situate where your brows are so they're not just kind of completely gone from your face. And then I'm also going to highlight under my contour because she seems to have that contour very snatched. So you just basically want to do like a line under the contour to really define it and blending that downwards towards the jaw. And you can see that really helps to define the face as well. Like I mentioned before, she does have a little bit of warmth on her eyelids. So I'm going to start off with that. I'm going in with the ColourPop Cute AF palette or no. This is the Yes Please palette. I get it so confused because it says this here, but then the name is on the back. I don't get it. Anyway, and I'm going to be going in with this color right here. It's just slightly darker than my skin tone and quite a bit warmer. I'm just applying that to the entire lid and onto the crease as well. And this is going to be the initial kind of transition color. I'm going to go in with... A cooler brown to do the actual contour of the crease but you can start to map it out with this color. Here you can start to see that shape 
take form. And then I'm also gonna take that real close to my bottom lash line and connect that with this. I feel like this has sagged a bit. Let me rip this, then I'm pulling it back tighter. There we go. I think queens usually tape their bald cap in place so that this doesn't happen. Anyway, we're all learning here, it's fine. Now I'm gonna go in with the Black Moon Cosmetics Orb of Light palette. I'm gonna take this light cool tone brown called Cold. I'm gonna take a little bit, it's very pigmented. I'm going to use that above my natural crease line. So I'm gonna do this with my eyes open so that I make sure that I can still see it when I have my eyes open. She kind of cheated her crease above where her natural crease is and bring that and connect it all the way with the nose contour and then this is where it gets interesting you don't bring that crease color all the way down and connect it down here like you normally would you're gonna extend it outwards where you see where my crease ends you see the little line and it ends that's where you're gonna start bringing it out now this is a look that will not work on everyone this won't work on hooded eyes because you do need that natural crease to create this shape so it is a very specific look that can't unfortunately be done on everyone and it just happens to work on my eyes i find that my eyes and hers are quite similarly shaped once that's done, I'm gonna go back in with that warm tone color just to slightly blend the edges out a little bit. This is supposed to be defined, but it's also pretty soft. Everything about this look is pretty minimal and pretty soft. Next, I'm gonna take the darker brown in the palette. It's called Wolf. And I'm gonna apply that to the outer corners of my upper lash line. And then it kind of just stops right about here. It's not even that blended out. It's just kind of like starts there and bam. But you will want to extend it to meet this top line at the very, very end. I think this top line might have needed to be a little bit higher so that there would be more space between the two because her dark brown line is quite a bit thicker but we'll see might be able to cheat that i'm gonna thicken it downwards and she also brings it close to the bottom lash line just to about the halfway mark and i'm gonna try to thicken this wing not thickening the top part i'm thickening the bottom part just because i don't have enough space to thicken the top part otherwise i would now to make sure that the gap between the two is really visible i'm gonna take this color here that's pretty close to my skin tone and i'm just gonna fill in that gap just very slightly don't want to make it white but i do want to make it quite visible that there is a gap there i'm gonna thicken this top line up a little bit with the warm color actually i also want to pack a little bit more of the warm color close to the bottom lash line and she doesn't have any highlight in the inner corner i think i'm just going to use that shadow close to my skin tone just to slightly brighten up the inner corner but like barely just very slightly now for brows i actually am going to do something i'm going to go in with the ColourPop brow boss gel this is a clear brow gel and i'm just going to comb it through my little hairs just so they have a little bit more definition just to make sure that they're all sticking the right way and her brows are incredibly full i don't know if they bleached her brows if those were her natural brows or if they made lace brows essentially brow wigs for her they might have because they were very full to the very very tip you can fake fullness when you're filling in your brow but when it's bleached like this you can't really fake it so i'm looking at her picture and it seems like she's wearing no mascara whatsoever but i think I think they did tightline her eye just so there would be a little bit of definition to the lash line. So I'm gonna go in with the Makeup Forever Artist Color Pencil in the color Limitless Brown. It also seems like they used it on the outer corner of the waterline and that's it. Doesn't go all the way. And then I'm gonna tightline my top 
waterline just to give the lashes a little bit of definition without actually painting them. Kind of crazy that she wasn't wearing any mascara. At least that's what it looks like in this photo. Now I'm gonna trust it. Now we just have lips and then the eye gloss and we're done. And I'm leaving the eye gloss for very, very last because I don't want to risk messing up the eyes. So for lips, I'm gonna start out with the NYX Slide On Glide On Lip Pencil in the color Dark Soul. It's a very, very dark burgundy. And I'm not gonna overline my cupid's bow too much but i am gonna overline this edge of my lips it's a more round shape i just hate using lip liner so i'm gonna go in with a brush to really perfect that line 10 out of 10 times i prefer using a brush to do my lips and even if i'm using a liner i'll go in with a brush to really get that line nice and crisp and then bottom lip is kind of the same i'm not gonna overdraw the center too much and then i'm gonna widen the sides I think that's pretty much it. I extended the outer corners. Now I'm gonna go in with two different lipsticks and you can tell that she's wearing a bullet lipstick in this photo because it does have a satin finish. So for the outermost part of my lips, I'm gonna go in with the Milani number 20, I Am Strong. I'm gonna apply that closest to that outline, leaving a blank space in the middle for my lighter red. Now the lip liner I used, I wanted it to be more towards brown than plum, but it was the best match I had. I really need to get more lip liners. And you would think I just have like a very dark brick red lip liner, but I don't. So that's the gist of it. I'm gonna go in with my little brush and just kind of blend those two together a little bit if I can. That pencil really sets though. And then for the center of my lips, I'm going in with the Besame Victory Red Color. And this has actually a really interesting story behind it. If you don't know Besame, they're a vintage replica makeup brand. So this color, Victory Red, is actually what used to be issued with military uniforms for women back in the day, back in World War II. So that's why it's called Victory Red, because this is the color of the army issued lipstick. So this is an exact replica of that color, but it's a very bright red. And so I'm taking it right in the center of my lips and blending it with the other color. Taking it all the way to the edge just to really help blend those three colors together. Oh yeah, it's a really nice red. I think I'm gonna take a little bit of my lip liner and just go over because I don't want a harsh lip line. So I'm just kind of filling in a little bit more inwards to really help with that gradient. A lot of people like doing lip liner after lipstick because it really helps to blend in with the lipstick. You get a much more seamless blend, but I'm doing both. My Lady Gaga yet. I also have to do her little beauty mark. And for that, I'm gonna use the Milk Makeup Longwear Gel Liner in the color CEO. It's their dark brown. It's almost black. That's why I'm using this. I'm just gonna take it, it's right kinda here. It also seems like she has some darker color along her lash line. So I'm gonna go in with this a little bit just along my bottom lash line. I'm gonna smudge it with my little pencil brush. Seems a little bit more accurate. And then I'm also going to apply it real close to my lash line, the top as well, and just blend that out a little bit. I know that I said it was just lipstick and gloss to finish the look, but that is so not true. I almost forgot about the most fun part of this look, and that's the blood all over the neck. So you can use any sort of blood you want. If you want to make your own blood, I actually have a tutorial on that that you can watch by clicking up here. And it is mouth safe blood, so if you want to do this look and have blood in your mouth running down, you can. For this particular shot, she doesn't have any blood on her face, just on her neck, so I'm going to be doing that today. So here I've got the Cryolon HD Blood Gel in the color Dark Venus. And this is a really thick blood, so I'm going to thin it out with some water actually. But I'm using it because I do like the color. So I'm actually going to... See, it's like a gel really thick gel. So I'm just going to pump that out and then drop a little bit of water on it and really just do this. Just mix it in with my fingers because it does look like she just has fingerprints all over her neck. So that's what I'm going to be doing. So it just looks like she has like marks all over her neck. This blood is kind of dried out, but she does have some like clots it seems, just like here or there. So it's not too far off from what I'm doing. 
and then go in with some water on my fingers and just spread. Oh shit, don't want to get it on my face. Uh, careful not to get blood on your clothes or anything because it will stain. It's basically like a blood necklace almost. Whoa, I have it all over my arm and I didn't even see. How did that happen? I don't know, but now I have a new clot. There we go. Now I'm gonna go wash my hands real quick and I'll be right back. You know what, I kinda wanna add a little bit, little, little bit of brown mascara, but just on my bottom lashes, very oh so slightly, and then just on the outer corners of my top lashes. And that barely looks like I have anything on, but just for my peace of mind, I feel weird not having at least a tiny bit of mascara. Okay, now I'm going to go put on my wig and then I'll do the gloss and then we'll be done. Actually, before I put on my wig, I really want these to stay, but as you can see, the tape isn't sticking to my bald cap. So desperate times call for desperate measures. And I want to see if I had duct tape. I don't, I have packing tape. I'm gonna try to use that instead. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to unstick what I've got going on here because it clearly ain't working. I think they have to stick to each other and that's where I went wrong. I have to stick the sticky end to the other sticky end and that seems to hold it in place. So let me try doing that. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take packing tape, stick it to this tape. Oh yeah, and then pull. And then stick these two together. There we go. Now she's snatched. I'm gonna do that again. I wanna make sure I am snatched. I'm gonna pull and tape. That's how you gotta do it. Or just buy the real stuff, you know? But anyway, if you don't have it, improvise. That's what queens do, right? Then I also wanna pull these two down here. I have so much tape on my head right now. But as you can see, I'm not using the packing tape directly on my skin. It's going over the bald cap, not on my hair either, and over the previous tapes. Ooh, now she's tight. Now that's a facelift. All right, now I'm gonna put my wig on. Okay, so it is now nearly like an hour and a half later because I went to put the wig on and it completely fell apart and then I had to restyle it twice because it would not stay. This hairstyle super weird. I don't know how to do it. I just did something that kind of mimicked the look. I'm really frustrated with it to say the least. Don't think it looks good, but it's something. And I'll probably take pictures with it like this and then with it down because she also wears it down. Then I feel like this side is being pulled and this one isn't. So my eyeshadow is now lopsided, so <laughs> That's great. Like, this should be like this. So that's another thing that's bugging me. <sighs> but, you know, live and learn. Next time I will get the actual facelift tapes. Now I just have to put gloss on my eyes and then we're done. And a little bit of powder because I've been wearing this makeup for a really long time. Let's do the powder first, shall we? I'm going in with the Milk Makeup one because she isn't super matte. Her skin still looks like skin but I do want to mattify my oils a little bit. For the eye gloss, I'm going in with the Milk Makeup Face Gloss. I'm gonna take a little bit on the back of my hand. Then I'm going in with a flat synthetic brush and I am just going to be applying it on my eyelids. The shine ends at that crease, so I just wanna make sure I don't get any on the crease. Don't wanna to apply too much because I don't want to ruin the eyeshadow. If you apply too much, it'll crease in seconds. So I just wanna apply enough that there is a wet look to the lid, but still wanna be kinda of careful with it. Oh, that's pretty. I think this is it. Ooh, I gotta go get my glove. I've got a glove. I'll be right back. So this is the finished look. I actually really like the makeup look. I think it's really, really elegant, really, really pretty. The wig, I wish it would die a million deaths, but that's a whole other story. But yeah, I think this is really easy, really simple to do, and it's also really iconic. People get what it is with just one glance, so this is a really great, really simple costume if you just wanna look pretty, but still be spooky at the same time, because, you know all this stuff going on. And you can also have blood running down your mouth to make it even creepier. But yeah, super simple, super comfortable costume. Bathrobe, that's all you need. Bathrobe, and I think she's wearing like, it looks like a black bodysuit underneath. If you wanna be comfortable and wanna be 
super gorgeous. I'd say this is a good way to go. But yeah, that's it for today. Thank you so much for tuning in. I really hope you enjoyed this and don't forget to come back tomorrow for another Halloween tutorial. I'll see you then. Bye!